Hi everyone, it's Anna for Pretty Actions, and today I want to show you how to use a gradient map in Photoshop, Creative Cloud, and Creative Suite to give your images a nice muted effect without looking washed out. So last week, Mandy did a really great video on how to achieve these beautiful, deep, rich colors. So I thought it would be fun to follow up follow up to her video to show you sort of the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of color editing. Now I'm going to break this post up into two separate videos. So in this video, we'll look at a, just a basic black and white or grayscale gradient map. And in the next video, we'll go a bit more advanced and in depth and look at ways to use gradient maps to add color to your highlights and shadows, also known as split toning. So what exactly is a gradient map, you're probably asking, and it's basically applying grayscale to your image, and you can set endpoints. So for example, in our first application in this tutorial, we're going to set our endpoints as solid black and white. And this is different from applying Photoshop's black and white filter because no auto-tone is happening here. It's just converting to grayscale from lightest lights to darkest darks. So first I'm making sure that my foreground and background colors are set to black and white over here. Then I'm going to create a gradient map adjustment layer. And it's super important to create an adjustment layer here and not edit directly on top of the original image. Otherwise, all of the color will be gone from our original and we don't want that. We want to mute the colors of our original image, but we don't want to totally remove and desaturate the color. So if your image comes up as a negative at this point, make sure to check the reverse box because you want your image to appear as a black and white, not as a black and white negative. Also check the dither box because this adds a tiny bit of grain to help with transitioning from light to dark. It also helps prevent banding, particularly if your image has a solid background like a sky or a, um, a studio backdrop. Okay, so next you're going to want to play with the blending modes and there are several different ways you can go about this. So if I set my blending mode to overlay, I get a lot of contrast and some really nice muted tones. This effect can be pretty heavy though, so I use overlay sparingly. Soft light is a really great alternative because it still mutes the tones, but without adding too much contrast. So you can also use the gradient map to make your subject stand out from the background. So here I'm going to set my blending mode to overlay, or I'm sorry, to multiply. And then I'm going to select a soft black brush at a very low opacity. And then what I want to do is erase on the layer mask. So now I'm going to lower the opacity of the multiply layer to blend the two layers a bit more. So you can really see now how that makes the subject pop from the background because the gradient map is muting the surroundings but leaving the tones um, in the subjects a bit more saturated. Okay, so that wraps up our first post on gradient maps. So um, check with us next time and I will have part two of this video post and we will look at using gradient maps to edit the highlights and shadow color values, also known as split toning.